women's sport, like with the injuries that, that have developed, what what's your position on most of this? What, what do you think are the big contributors to why we see more joint injuries? We seem to be seeing more ACL injuries. Um, you know, there's a couple of papers in preparation for this we sort of had a look at and have to discuss them with you. But do you, do you have a position on where most of this stuff is coming from or at the moment are you kind of just <laughs> observing what you're seeing and, and letting it kind of build? Yeah, I think obviously there's been a lot of research um, recently and over the years on the differences between women's and men's injuries and especially in AFL. Um, there's obviously a few things and theories that contribute to that. but well, Where do you land on that? Because Pers- obviously you've seen both sides <laughs> of it. So r- rather than telling us your, your research hat, <laughs> yeah, where, yeah. Where, do you, where do you land on this? Look, personally, I think a lot of the problem is – um, that as females we're probably not exposed to enough gameplay. Yep. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, we're playing six to ten matches in mm. a year. And when you think about any other sport, like that is a very low number. We play, I think last season we played one practice match and two intra clubs mm. and ten games. So... It's just not enough. It's just not it's, enough physical conditioning. And it, like in preparation for this, you know, I sense it's a jack and... It's a really good paper uh, that came out in 2019 by Marek, uh, who's based at one of the US universities. And then they had a group that was based in, in Germany to help them complete the study. But it was collegiate female soccer players. And what they did was they were using uh, imaging to determine the thickness of their ACL across like a preseason and a season. And what they actually found is the ACL thickness increased across the season. Um, and there was increased like inflammatory markers and things, but the actual, you know, the actual capacity of the, the structure was bigger. Um, and they hypothesized like different reasons why some of it was to do with, they believe that the micro tears led to this development, but you know, it's one of the things that, and, and we're hoping to obviously maybe even get a couple of surgeons on, they always talk about, you know, the graph thickness and what they were able to harvest and all of that kind of thing. So it makes sense that you want to have more tissue to be able to deal with those multi-directional loads that you, you, you experience through your ACL in a sport like this. Um, and it's clear from what was, what you're saying is as the time went on, they actually developed more capacity within that tissue. Um, have you, have you seen much, uh, in terms of the more gameplay that's being done that people are like from your own observations rather than yeah. just like a more broad, yeah, I th- people are more prepared for the game. I don't know. Something I've probably noticed this season with some of the girls that have done their ACLs is they're probably the girls that wouldn't have played any VFL. Yeah. So actually, that's a really that's a really good point because I like having worked in the system, I've seen the ones that tend to play VFL and AFL almost seem to be much better prepared than the ones that only play AFL. And for a year or two there, there were a few that were pretty snobbish about it, and we're like, "No, nah, I'm an AFL player." Hmm. But maybe they were actually, you know, as the saying goes, cutting off their own nose to spite themselves, you know, like, I think, is, is that what you, is that how you maybe see it? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, from what I've seen in the last year or two, I think those girls that have only played 10 games or so, eight to 10 games, and they're not going and playing VFL, like, um, yeah, it's, it's really probably impacted that because they're not being exposed to that stimulus regularly. They're having long periods off where they might, just be running or you know they might not be doing anything at all and then you're coming into a short pre-season you're playing a couple of intra clubs and a pracky and then you're into a very intense short season um so yeah i think it's probably actually been a really big benefit for the girls that have played vflw and yeah looking at some of the girls that have done their acls recently I, you think they fit I, into that profile uh, yeah i think so given that like clinically you profiling people a little bit more like that because I think it's something that we've spoken about a lot um, and a lot of that work came out particularly from Tim Gabbett and his group around like making sure that your training like volumes and intensities are building up over time so your physical capacity actually deals with the stresses of the sport. Um, having gone through it firsthand, does it actually made you sit there particularly clinically and being like, oh, I actually think you're not doing enough when someone comes in and they're reporting some sort of pain or soreness. Typically it's like something like tendon irritation. I think sometimes 
the first movie is always like, oh, you've got pain, like let's pull you back. Mm. But actually, when you think about some of this stuff, it's almost like let's build you up rather than pull you back. Have you have you noticed that's something that you consider more or less than in the past, given you weren't sort of exposed to it with um, without the elite sport? Yeah, I think that chronic load plays a really important role in a lot of injuries and you'll often see people that have had long periods of not doing anything and then all of a sudden they decide that they're going to do a 10k race and they run 5k's a day for two weeks in a row and wonder why their body can't handle it so I think it definitely comes back to that sort of chronic loading and I know Tim's done a lot of great work around that but um, I think it definitely relates to the AFLW population as well like if if they're not um, having a high chronic load in regards to gameplay then I think that seems to be affected in the short term in that acute sort of loading. Do you think that could be why we we tend to see more ACLs earlier in the AFLW season? Do you think you know you mentioned pre-season length just before do you think that's related or um, or not? Yeah I think potentially it could be Um, obviously there were quite a few in the first few rounds this season and I think COVID probably didn't help with that either because, yeah. you know, That's if, you're only, <laughs> if you're living in Melbourne and there were quite a few from the girls in, in uh, Victoria as well, but if you're only allowed to exercise for an hour a day, there's a fair chance that you weren't... Getting as much, yeah, as chronic loading as yeah. 